Hello, welcome, Cabbage here. In War of the Visions, let's do one more tier list. This is going to be the last one for a while, I think. <laughs> but starting this year, uh, Asaruto, one of the uh, kind of top JP YouTubers for War of the Visions, uh, he started doing tier lists, uh, talking about characters that were kind of the strongest and then the most used in guild battles. Uh, it's that type of tier list that I enjoy, which is more concentrated, which has a focus. And so I feel it's easier to uh, trust this sort of tier list. And then he does them about once a month because uh, the way that the game has been recently is that at the first of the month they'll release a very strong kind of marquee character uh, which will set the tone for the meta. But then he will uh, release the video about two weeks after the release of that unit because that's what it really takes in order for people to level up that character, get a feel for it, uh, see what kind of impact it really has on the guild battles. And then this tier list was released on January 6th, um, so it's actually after the release of Megamont and then the EX jobs for Gilgamesh, uh, but it's too early for either of them to have any real effect on the meta, so they're not really uh, accounted for here. Uh, but kind of my main reason for making this video is to show off uh, 2B up there in SS, and then kind of talk briefly about Evade. I've seen a lot of uh, talk online among uh, global players that uh, Evade is dead. Maybe it's time I uh, dust off my old uh, Chicken Little term here. But as we can see from the uh, position of 2B here, and then also uh, Rob right next to her with his uh, vision card, Evade is not dead at all, or it wasn't dead at this time in JP. Evade is a kind of an interesting mechanic which it has like its own metagame that sort of exists outside of the regular metagame. Like the regular is more kind of focused on like elements and then attack type resistances. While Evade cares about those uh, much less. And then they can kind of go against magic and physical attacks sort of interchangeably. So it makes them more versatile. There are a lot of characters with 100% hit attacks. But evade units should not be able to evade every other unit in the game anyway. There should be counters. We don't want a character that's too strong, or else everybody's just going to go for that character. It's going to change the meta, and then the developers, they'll have to, um, you know, develop ways to counter that character, and then they're all going to chase that one, and it's just going to be too one-sided. Power creep's going to go too fast. So 2B, while very powerful and very evade is not going to be the best character in the game, and that's how it should be. There's also the matter of 2B being released with uh, EX jobs. She'll be able to go to level 120 immediately. And so everybody below her that does not have the EX jobs uh, is not going to do very well against her. And I'm not making this video in order to convince everybody to pull for 2B or to convince everybody to play evade. Uh, but for the people that were strongly considering her, or people that are fans of playing Evade, but were maybe dissuaded by all the people talking about to be an Evade in a negative light, I want to reassure those people that you can still go for those characters, uh, you can still go for that Evade account, and it'll still really be good. Uh, I'm going to keep going with my global account, uh, Evade Heavy. Oh, one other thing. To uh, be, she has barriers, so even if you can hit her, uh, she will mitigate that damage, and that'll make her even more difficult to uh, take down. Maybe the uh, people dissing 2B forgot about those, or maybe they never knew about them in the first place, in which case, why are they opening their mouths? But yes, yeah, she'll be very difficult to take down. I said in a, a previous video, but um, kind of a early counter to her uh, will be Mediena, uh, preferably with EX jobs, and then uh, raise her accuracy. Maybe you could use the Wesson Vision card, or you could use a Decider of Fate from her ninja subjob. Shoot that LB, and then pray that you hit her, and then one-punch her. <laughs> okay, I think that's all I wanted to say about Evade and 2B. Uh, go for her with confidence. She's a great character. Uh, but let's kind of look uh, from the bottom, and then again, uh, these are characters ranked uh, based on how powerful they are in guild battle, and then also how often uh, Asaruto will see them. Uh, but D tier, that's very sad. I always think that Miranda has good utility. She's got quick, you can use her as like a, a quick catapult to throw your tank or your attacker to the front line, so I don't think she deserves to be way down there. 
But again, uh, the PvP meta is decided by the players. It's who the players use. Uh, the developers, of course, they will, uh, you know, release new stuff, new characters, new vision cards. Uh, but if the players don't use them, then they won't have an effect on the PvP meta. And so, like, what we're looking at here are the trends of the Japanese players in guild battles. Uh, but, you know, global players, they might uh, act differently. They might have different trends uh, because they have different uh, stuff, you know, exclusive stuff like Dwayne. Or maybe they have like future knowledge, which is uh, influencing their choices. So yeah, this is how it played out in JP. Might not play out the same way in Global. Okay, C tier. This is before uh, EX jobs for Ayaka and Federica. Uh, but after EX jobs for Eileen. That's very sad that she's at the bottom there still. <laughs> okay, and then B tier. Um... We see the summer units, uh, summer Kiton on the far left, and then summer Ridishu on the far right. Uh, they're not doing too great in the uh, meta here. And then A tier, this is post EX jobs for Gilgamesh, but I guess people still haven't leveled him up, so he's still middle of the uh, pack there. And then we see uh, Mont, this is EX Mont. There was still a lot of him in guild battle at this time. He was a uh, legit choice. Uh, he's got the uh, stone throw for 100% hit. Uh, he's pretty beefy against uh, physical attacks, so yeah. Okay, moving up to S tier. Uh, we see Rain up there, probably there as a uh, counter to Yuna. Uh, we see a bunch of uh, dark characters. Kine, Super Stern, uh, EX Stern, and then Jiza. Uh, we got old standbys like uh, Leela and Nivlu and Ildira. Uh, Warrior of Light is up there. This is pre-EX job, so yeah, he's still very usable even now. And then uh, there's uh, Winter Victora next to him. This was before she had her boom. People were kind of mm, about her at first, and then as time went on, her uh, stock went up and up. It's always interesting to see uh, characters uh, do that. And then SS tier, we have the uh, two Final Fantasy X attackers, Auron and Tita. Uh, we got Garble, we got Ogris, those are both at uh, 99. Uh, this is EX Christmas Mashiri, EX Rob, uh, let's see, 2B and 9S, both EX as well, and then uh, Winter Vineta. And then at the very top we got uh, Yuna, best character in the game of course. And so yeah, that is the uh, that was the state of the JP Guild battles immediately after the release of uh, Megamon, and then uh, Gilgamesh, EX Jobs. Alright, uh, so Asaruto, he did these tier lists about one a month, um, so as the global meta catches up to uh, where the JP meta was when Asaruto made these videos, um, I'll make uh, reviews just like this uh, for that as well, kind of as a, a preview uh, for how the, uh, the meta might play out in guild battles. Okay, I think that'll do it for this video. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again. Take care.